Good morning and welcome. Today we will be singing the chant mass. Please stand and join me in singing our opening hymn, number 134, Holy Patron, the Saluting, number 134. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. My name is Father Ken Geraci of the Fathers of Mercy. I am your missionary this week for our parish mission over at St. Cecilia's for the Divine Mercy Parish community. So thank you for having me here with you. Uh, one, this is quite possibly one of the most beautiful churches I've ever been in. And I understand your faith is a reflection of the beauty that is here. So it's a privilege to be among you. My friends, let us call to mind our sins as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Give me justice, O God, and please my cause against a nation that is faithless. From the deceitful and cunning, rescue me. For you, O oh God, are my strength. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, and may we walk eagerly in the same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, 
when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reference. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever lo loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will be my servant. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd heard it and said it was thunder, but others said, an angel has spoken to me, to him. Jesus answered and said, the voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of the judgment of this world. Now the, world, the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death that he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I want to thank you again for having me here with you in your parish community for our parish mission this week. A parish mission, as you are many, many of you are very familiar with, is a time for renewal, a time for conversion, time for learning, time to experience God in a new way. I always tell people if I were sitting in these pews 22 years ago listening to this homily, it would be right about here that I would start to tune, to start to tune out. Um, I spent the vast majority of my life as an agnostic. I came to faith late in life, uh, my, or not so late, but in my mid-20s. Um, I never understood faith. I grew up in a Catholic family where we went to church every single Sunday. We never missed Mass. But for our family, faith was Sunday. It was it, the box we checked. We went to church, we dressed up. Um, but when we came home, there were no devotions, there was no rosary, no scripture, no prayer in my household. It will not surprise you that because my family did not pray together, we did not stay together. It was my senior year of high school that my parents' marriage ended in divorce, and I began playing my mom and dad against each other, and I gave up faith and religion altogether. I thought what would make me happy in life is if as I just made enough money. Money's going to fix everything, right? Yeah, yeah, not so much. As I pursued this, I went off to college to get a business degree and began working in the technology field in, in business. My senior year of college, a computer company came to our school looking for a student who understood primary market research as well as the internet. And this is back in 1997, so this is really before the internet had really broken through and, and is understandable as we understand it today. I was one of the only students who kind of had that skill set, and so I was offered this position, and I was hired into the advanced research and development group of this organization. We were working on these little devices. I don't know if you've ever heard of them before, but it's called an MP3 player. Yeah. Some of your grandchildren have them surgically implanted in their faces. Sorry about that. We did not invent that technology. We were one company among many developing products for that market space. Our organization's claim to fame is that we had developed the intellectual property 
that created the secure sale of digital content across the internet. We were the very first organization to have that. In a sense, we were the very first working prototype of what is today the iTunes store or the Google Play store. The people that I was working with were quite possibly some of the most brilliant people in the industry at the time. Again, there was lots of brilliant people, but uh, I, we had our share working for us. The thing that cr what made me a little concerned though is that 80% of them were devout Catholic or Christian. And I couldn't figure that out. Who, how could they be so smart, but still believe in this stuff called faith? See, my obstacles to faith were two things. First and foremost, I'm, I have an engineering mind, I'm very scientific in my thinking, so I couldn't figure out how God could exist with all of the articles of science being true. The other side was, is I didn't want somebody to tell me how to live my life. I thought I could figure it out on my own. And so every time this discussion of faith would come up, I would just run the other way. Not long, maybe a year or so after working for this group, my boss approaches me and shares with me an idea he has for a new software company. He says, we can solve this problem and I think we can make a ton of money in the process. He said, the problem is, is I can't pay you for your work, but what I will do is give you ownership in the company. And so we worked our day jobs working nine to six, and then we went to Mike's house in the evening and we would work from seven in the evening to one or two in the morning. And we would do that four or five days a week. And there were six of us on this team doing this. After seven, eight months of working together on this project, the, pro the company was presentable and we showed it to a variety of investors. One venture capital firm liked the idea so much, they invested four and a half million dollars into our little project. So here I am, 24, 25 years old, thinking that I have arrived. My ego the size of your church. Um, and then my boss brought me right back down the planet Earth. Mike is a devout Catholic. Mike, what I'm going to share with you is a summary of three or four conversations. But effectively, Mike came up to me one day and said, Ken, professionally, I have no problems with you, but personally, I do. When we're with clients or investors and you see a Christian symbol, you make a Christian reference. But you've told me you don't believe in God, you don't pray, you don't go to church. Ken, also, there are stories you tell unbecoming a man, let alone a Christian. So I'm curious, which is it? Well, first of all, that's a real friend, isn't it? Mike loved me so much to challenge me, to call me to a higher level in life. He had nothing to gain and everything to lose. Mike called me to my first conversion, which was a call to authenticity and integrity, to let my yes be yes and my no be no. And my friends, I guess that would be my first question to invite each of you to consider. How are you letting your yes be yes and no be no? We all call ourselves Catholics. We all call ourselves believers in Jesus Christ. But how do we live that outside the doors of this church? Is there, any, is there a thin line between Saturday night and Sunday morning? Or do we authentically try to live our faith in the things we watch, consume, the way we speak? So Mike not only made that challenge to me, he invited me to come to Mass with he and his family. And eventually I took him up on that offer. And I remember seeing the smartest, and Mike is really one of the most intelligent men I still know to this day, kneeling before Jesus in the Eucharist. That did not convert me, but it gave me pause that the person, the smartest person I know, believes in Jesus in the Eucharist. As I began to say yes to God, God then began to flood my life, and I had a series of conversion. I went from agnostic to spiritual. I was spiritual for a while. I even had a yoga mat. It was official. From spiritual to studying world religions, to studying world religions, to evangelical Christianity, to evangelical Christianity, here to Catholicism. Why am I telling you this story? This is the theme of our parish mission, not my conversion, but the answer to the question, why be Catholic? Why be Catholic when you could be anything else? My friends, I would argue that that question is the most important question in our culture, in our world today. Because if we get that question right, if that question is true, and we have a good answer to it, it then sets the stage to answer all of the other challenging questions we have in our culture, in our world today that addresses the dignity of the human person, the immigration, secular, political, all of these things, the life issues, all of these things are found in that one question, why be Catholic? 
My friends, I'm not going to share much more of my story with you. I might sprinkle a couple pieces here and there. But rather, I want to take you on the story of the church, the journey of the church. What did Jesus do and how can you know? This evening at 6.30 over at St. Cecilia's, we're going to gather there at 6.30. We're going to go from 6.30 to about 7.15, about an hour and 15 minutes. That's not an hour and 15 minutes. 6.30 to 7.45, that's an hour and 15 minutes. We're going to do that. It's early. We're going to gather for an hour and 15 minutes, and tonight I'm going to open up for you, what did Jesus do? Did Jesus give us a church or a spirituality? What did he do and how can you know? What I'm about to say, I don't know if this is true or not, but when I was a young person, my experience of faith was older people telling me I had to believe because they said so. I never felt like someone took the time to open up or answer those hard questions or explain it from history or reason. This is just what we did because they said so. You will never hear me say you have to believe because we say so, but rather I'm gonna open this up from yes, divine revelation, what does God say? But I wanna give you the historical context, the reason behind it, faith and reason throughout all of these conferences. So tonight, what did Jesus do, church or spirituality? Tomorrow evening, we're gonna answer the question, why do we do that as Catholics? Why do we believe in Jesus in the Eucharist? Why do we believe in devotion to the saints, specifically the Blessed Virgin Mary? And why do we go to confession to a priest? A little spoiler, this is truly Jesus in the Eucharist. Truly God made present in the host, where the bread becomes the body, blood, soul, and divinity. My friends, the catechism says that this teaching is the source and summit of our faith. If we're wrong on this, we are wrong on everything. If we are wrong on this, it's not oops. It puts us into the category of idolatry because we are worshiping bread. But my friends, this is not a false teaching. This is a true teaching. The emphasis that I'm making here is that this is truly God present here and you can encounter him in a new way. This is the point of a parish mission is to encounter Jesus Christ. What made me leave everything to follow Jesus Christ? Most of you don't know this. I was on a date thinking about marriage the day that I realized I was supposed to be a priest. Okay, hashtag worst date ever. Okay. <laughs> Actually the best date ever. But I left everything like Matthew at the tax collector stand. When I heard the call, there was no turning back. I love being a priest and I love our faith. But what made me change it was because I read a good book. No, the answer is that I encountered Jesus in the Eucharist profoundly. The crazy thing is that I came to the Catholic Church for 17 years. From my birth until 17 years old, I received Holy Communion every single Sunday. But I never knew him. I never understood him. I never encountered him until something changed. So this is the point of this week. My friends, each of you, your faith may be the best it's ever been. God can raise it and elevate it even higher. Some of you might be like me, who was uncertain or unsure, or you might just be going through the motions right now. Life may be busy, your family, work, whatever. It might be crazy in your home. And you're just, you feel lucky to be able to even get here. My, my friends, this mission is for each and every one of you, regardless of where you're at, to encounter Christ, to let him change your life. I'm going to say a lot of great stuff, but the encounter you're going to have this week can be life-changing if you come. So it's so important. This is a family-friendly event. Bring everyone, your children as well. So tonight, what did Jesus do, church or spirituality? Tomorrow, why do we do that as Catholics? Eucharist, Mary, confession. And then Tuesday is entitled, The Two Obstacles of Healing. On Tuesday, it's going to be slightly different. Not only are we going to talk about healing, we're going to have a Eucharistic healing service where I'm going to process through the church with Jesus in the monstrance, stopping at each set of pews along the way, coming up and down the aisles, allowing you to experience the healing graces that flow from Jesus. As I said at the beginning of this, Jesus is truly present here and he heals today as much as he did 2,000 years ago. But it's our faith that makes us well. Every parish mission, and I've been doing this for nine years, 10 years, there are physical healings, emotional healings, and spiritual healings, all manifesting in a variety of ways. And so that is Tuesday. And then Wednesday is the solemn close of the mission. Wednesday is entitled, How to Pray the Mass. 
My friends, I argue this is the most important night of the mission, especially for the young people. Older people will tell me, Father, my mind wanders at Mass, and I, I get it, I can help with that. But people will say to me, Father, Mass is boring. I don't get anything out of Mass. And I get it. I, that's the way I was until I was 16, 17 years old. But when people say that to me, I'll ask them, have you ever studied it? Has it have you ever been taught the Mass? Had anyone ever explained to you at the beginning of Mass, time and eternity come together, heaven and earth unite, we are drawn into the presence of God before his throne. There are these different angelic processions that take place at Mass. Children's eyeballs about fall out of their head. That doesn't sound boring. That sounds amazing. But how would you ever know that if it was not taught this is what I want to do. I want to open up the Mass for you. If you struggle with Mass, you have an obligation to be there, to break through that, to learn. My friends, if you can give yourself at Mass, you will always receive something incredible from it. Yes, I'm going to explain to you practical things, but also the mystical dimension at the Mass. My friends, these are the gifts that I have for you. In addition to these conferences, one of the great gifts of a parish mission is the opportunity to go to confession. I will hear confessions from 5.30 to 6.20 every evening, and then when the mission ends, I will go back into the confessional and hear confessions until the last person goes. One of the best parts of going to confession to me, you'll never see me again. Maybe you have sins you've never confessed. Maybe you're carrying a great burden in your life. Maybe it's been years. COVID messed up everyone's schedule. Maybe it's not you. Maybe it's a family member or friend that you're thinking of right now that needs a good confession. Invite them to come see Father Pushover, Father Easy Go, and say, this guy, he's a little off. He's our kind of crazy. Come see him, right? We have these pamphlets. You can read through the pamphlet. It will make it your easiest confession ever. If you can get through the doors of the confessional, I can help. My friends, a confession is a great way to just be, re-begin your life, to end the old, begin something new. So you'll have that opportunity every, every day for confession. What I'm describing to you, my friends, these are the gifts that I want to give you. But as I said at the beginning of this, God has something for each and every one of you. For you, your children, your family, your marriage, this community. The question is this. Are you ready and willing to receive it? Are you able to give God these next four nights? It's a lot to ask. I know many of you already have commitments and are busy. But respectfully... I'd like to invite you to cancel any other obligation or commitment, especially for your children, and allow God to be your priority this week. See, this is not between you and I or between you and Father. This is between each and every one of you individually and what Almighty God wants to do in your life. So maybe you can only come three nights. Maybe you can only come two. My friends, if you seriously give God your very best this week, what will he give you in return? So as you receive our Lord, ask him, Lord, what will you do this week? What can I expect? I can almost assure you he will say, come and see. Come and see what I will do in your life. With great boldness, my friends, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born from for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God and true God. Begotten not me, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was his partner, the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is in the Holy Spirit, 
has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. With great trust and faith in our Heavenly Father's love and care for us as his sons and daughters, let us turn to him with all of our needs and petitions. That the church may be strengthened by the Holy Spirit in its ministry of spreading the good news of Jesus throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who serve in our federal government will rededicate themselves to the preservation of our Constitution, protect religious liberty, and oppose unjust laws. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the unrest in Haiti, and that our Haitian brothers and sisters will not lose hope, and that we may continue to support their needs as we follow Jesus' command to love our neighbor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our divine mercy parish mission will be successful and lead us to open our hearts to repentance and the merciful forgiveness of the Lord, who restores life to those who call on him with faith and trust. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and those suffering in any way may have the strength and wisdom to unite their sufferings to Christ and obtain peace and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the members of our families and our parish community who have died may be welcomed into God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you as your sons and daughters, asking you to hear and answer these prayers because they are in accord with your holy will. And we ask all of these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in singing our presentation hymn. It is number 137, Gracious God, number 137. Lead us, Lord, into the desert. Lead us through the wilderness. Through this journey we will follow, for we long to see in this time of sacred struggle in this time of sacrifice we rejoice for we remember that you love us into life gracious god mercy is your name redeem Receiving love, we give our lives away. Lord, we hunger for your presence. Lord, we thirst for your grace. When we consume over, Lord, again is emptiness. Gracious God. Redeeming love, you give your life away. Gracious God, we bless your holy name. Receiving love, we give our lives away. Teach, teach us, Lord.
receiving love we give our lives away pray brethren that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to god the almighty father Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teaching of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise, we acclaim You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <coughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Walker, our bishop, and all of the clergy, 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace Peace, guys. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. Keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
Please join in singing our communion hymn. It is number 344, Gift of Finest Week. Number 344.
door into the home bound will come up to you. That's it. That was close. Yeah, it's too close. There we go. Lots of water coming. About half, right? Four, 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 four. Yep. Our lips as food may we possess some purity of heart, and what is ours in time may be human for all eternity. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Next Sunday is our special collection for divine mercy. And this month will be uh, for liturgical surprise, like the bread, wine, candles, lighters, and wicks, etc. And also next weekend will be our packaging for the parish family against hunger. We package those meals that we get sent over to our twin parish. It takes over 200 people to make this happen. So I hope that you'll be willing to spend some time, come over. It's actually a lot of fun packaging the meals together. And it's such a worthwhile cause. I've been over there seeing how these meals are, are cherished and how they actually might be the meal of that day for that person. So please consider coming and helping us. And also tonight, at, before the mission at 6.30, uh, there's a simple soup supper that begins at 5.30 that you're welcome to come and join us. Again, thank you for having me. Uh, if you have any non-Catholic friends, uh, tonight and tomorrow night are really excellent nights for a non-Catholic to kind of hear the Catholic perspective. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.